द प्रोविजन फॉर डेटा माइनिंग कैपिटल गेन वॉट इज कैपिटल गेन वी विल लर्न वॉट एवर इनकम यू अर्न फ्रॉम बींग ए लॉयर बींग ए डॉक्टर बींग ए चार्ट अकाउंटेंट द इनकम वी कॉल इट एज इनकम फ्रॉम प्रोफेशन सिंपली यू कैन नॉट कैरी द लॉस एंड सेट ऑफ फॉर द नेक्स्ट ईयर प्रॉफिट इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल देर आर सर्टन रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन आर देर हाउ मेनी ईयर्स यू कैन कैरी फॉरवर्ड A warm welcome to one and all. This is your Adesh Sir here, lecturing with the Ashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. We are discussing topic called Income Tax Law and Practice. In the fifth semester, the same topic we did, that is Part One, and now we are doing Part Two. What is the difference between Part One and Part Two? In the Part One, we go with all the fundas, our basic concept like. What is income tax? Under income tax, what do we get? Assessee, assessment year, previous year, person. All these calculation we learn in your part one. That is in your fifth semester. Once you done with your part one, our basics. Now we will go little advanced one. That is nothing but your income tax law and practice. Two, we are discussing only direct tax. We are not touching indirect tax. Indirect tax, it is all about GST. Here we are discussing your five heads. So we'll go to your syllabus, your question paper pattern, your internal assessment, as well as what is the learning outcome from this particular topic. So these are the learning outcome, our course outcome from this particular. topic now if you learn your income tax law and practice part 2 you will learn the procedure for computation of income from business or profession i'll explain you what is business or profession while explaining your topic or your syllabus the provision for determining capital gain what is capital gain we will learn computation or computer income from other source demonstrate the computation of total income of an individual comprehend the assessment procedure and know the power of income tax authority these are the concept we are going to learn in your income tax law your unit number 1 profit and gain of business and profession i'll not go in depth because while doing this particular topic i'll go each and every aspect of this particular topic now in this we should understand what is business and what is profession now assume that you are running a provision shop you are running a gold shop you are running you are a metal merchant all these called as business whatever income you earn whatever expenditure you do all we consider as your income from business you are supposed to pay tax on this particular income now what is your profession profession in the sense for example you are a doctor you are a lawyer you are a medical practitioner like doctor or your chartered accountant all these comes under profession whatever income you earn from being a lawyer being a doctor being a chartered accountant the income we call it as income from profession hope you are clear income from business and income from profession income from business or income from profession the income from profession it is nothing but your advocate your doctor and chartered accountant we are learning only these three concept under this profession business it is a common topic just you are supposed to learn what are inadmissible or allowable and disallowed items i'll teach you the concept i'll teach you the format if you learn that format you can solve any number of problems in this the second topic is capital gain what do you mean by capital gain so you know that what is gain gain it is nothing but the income or profit earned what is capital yes you bought jewelry for 50000 and you are selling same jewelry for 70000 what is the profit 
20,000. This 20,000 we call it as capital gain. Capital means what? Asset. Any asset if you sell at profit that will be called as capital gain. The same jewelry 50,000 you sold for 30,000. That is nothing but capital loss. For more income, capital gain. For lesser price, it will be called as capital loss. So the third topic is called as income from other source. As you know that in income tax or direct tax, there are five heads are there. Which are those five? Yes, income from salary, income from house property, income from business or profession, income from capital gain. And the last one is called as income from other source. Other than four, whatever left out, all comes under income from other source. Like any other income, you want some prize money in lottery. You want prize in big boss. You want prize in some uh, activity by showing your talent or something you earned. If you are not considered a, that as a profession, by luck, by choice, by your effort, if you earn any extra income, that will be called as your income from other source. If you have a habit of earning money in race course, the income from race course we consider as income from other source. You deposit 1 lakh in bank, every month you are getting interest of around 500. That 500 we call it as income from other source. Hope you are clear what is income from other source. Yes, we have to understand which are the items comes under income from other source and how to compute, how to calculate your income from other source. And the next one, it is set off and carry forward losses and assessment of individual. In this, the assessment of individual is very important. You are supposed to learn what is assessment of individual. Now, assessment of individual means, for example, whatever income I am earning, assume that I am getting income as a salary from college. So I am running some academy or tuition or something. From that I am getting some income. That is income from profession. So I have jewelry. I sold my jewelry at profit. Income from capital gain. So I am running one business. Some business I am running. From that I am getting some income. That is only a business profession. And next. You got salary, you got professional income, capital gain, and next, income from other source. I'm running a sum. I have invested or deposited some money in the bank. I'm getting interest from that. That will be called as income from other source. Then, I have three houses I have let out for rent. Whatever rent I'll get, that is income from house property. What is the total income? adding everything, assume that it is around 10 lakh. This will be called as individual income. How do you calculate tax? Now I have to see what is the tax for salary, profession, capital gain, other source, house property, add everything. Then go with the slab up to 2 lakh 50,000 nil, 2 lakh 52, 5 lakh it is 5 percent. These kind of slabs I have to apply. After applying whatever tax I get, I am supposed to pay tax. That is called assessment of individual. This topic will help you after your graduation. If you join any audit firm or if you go for any accounting kind of job, definitely this will help you. Now, once if it is done, you have to go with set off and carry forward. What is set off and what is carry forward? Easiest topic, set off carry forward means, assume that in 2023, you got some 2 lakh loss. How much you got? 2 lakh loss. Next year, you got 8 lakh profit. This is in 2024. In 2024, you got profit how much? 8 lakh. 2023, what is the profit? There is no profit. There is a loss of 2 lakh. You are not supposed to pay tax on 8 lakh. This 2 lakh, what you are supposed to do? You have to carry forward. You have to carry forward. 
carry forward to next year carry forward to next year how much you are carrying 2 lakh you have to minus 8 lakh profit 2 lakh loss 6 lakh you are supposed to pay tax on 6 lakh 2 lakh you carry forwarded and set off this 2 lakh you set off to 8 lakh this is called as carry forward and set off simply you cannot carry the loss and set off for the next year profit it is not possible there are certain rules and regulations are there how many years you can carry forward for which head you can set off all these rules and regulations are there nothing to worry you will not get any problems on this only you are supposed to learn the theory concept hope you are clear as we'll go in detail about all this topic while doing that particular topic assessment procedure and income tax authority these are the assessment procedure and income tax authority easiest one so everywhere if you go to any institution for vidyashram management is the authority if you go to infosys management is the authority if you go to any institution any center even though it is a small or bigger one there must be management will be there authority will be there the responsibility will be taken care by whom authority the decision will be taken care by whom taken by authority now you understood what is authority and the next one is what the powers what are the powers of the authority income tax department have the authority what are the powers they have power for example whatever tax i am paying as an individual whether i paid properly whether i have done any fraud manipulation in my income any changes i have done i have hided any of my income that will be checked by authority and if i have done any wrongful thing they have rights to punish me that is called as power hope you are clear they have power to come and check they have power to inspect they have power to collect any documents from me and they have power to punish me i'll go in detail about this particular topic that is called assessment procedure and income tax authority so those are the five things are five topics five units you are supposed to learn all the five topics are interesting as well as easy compared to your module 1 now visit any chartered accountant office and identify the procedure involved these are your skill development so i'll explain you all this in the classroom out of this you are not supposed to do all the five activity any two or three you have to select and you have to do that and you have to mention all the activity whatever you have done in the practical record book so these are the your internal assessment pattern you know better because you are in the final year and the same procedure what we followed what we did for your first and second year the same thing we are supposed to follow you have three internals out of three you are supposed to attend minimum two we are not insisting or we are not telling you to attend only two you are free or you are welcome to attend all the three if you attend all the three you will get more knowledge you will be well prepared for your examination but for the worst case if not at least you are supposed to attend two so that we can go with the average so 60 marks will be your paper you may wonder so why 60 marks your final exam and 30 marks your internal what about the 10 marks the 10 marks will be considered for your record book your attendance all these things will be considered for the remaining 10 marks so your passing marks as you know that 21 out of 60 is compulsory the overall should be 40 including your internal assessment there is no minimum requirement in the internal assessment but there is a minimum requirement in the final examination even though you are zero in internal assessment you scored 40 out of 60 your pass we need minimum 21 and it must be 40 and above the total i individual or total so these are the books for reference usually for income tax i don't refer any books whatever the college gives you that is more than sufficient 
if you feel that if you are doing any other professional courses and sir i want to know more about this topic i don't want any uh, only for examination point of view i need to go in depth then you are free to refer these books i always refer vinod k singhania or mehrotra these two are the best book to refer so before i say thank you i'll go back to all your previous slide if you want to take any screenshot or if you want to note down any of the points please you can write your unit number 1 unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 unit 5 so these are your books for reference so this is all about your today's session i tried my best to brief you about your topic income tax law and practice so we'll go more about this we'll go in depth and in detail regarding this particular topic thank you